Hello everybody, today we're going to be looking at this very nice brand new Sylvania Lumilux Plantastar 400 watt high pressure sodium grow lamp. Now this particular grow lamp was bought at a Habitat for Humanity restore in Phoenix, Arizona for $3. Super cheap, if I do say so myself. Now, normally when these lamps are being sold at HID grow lamp stores, they're usually at around $50 to $80 depending on the model. And the brand, of course. Since this is Sylvania, and Sylvania still makes these lamps, they are probably sold at around $85 to $90. But I got this for $3. So huge profit and huge deal. So this was definitely worth purchasing. So let's get to looking at the lamp etch. So of course we have our company brand, which is Sylvania. And of course, our nickname of the lamp, which is Lumilux. And of course, this symbol here means that you cannot recycle this bulb. It either has to be thrown out in the trash because of all of the elements in the arc tube. And this symbol means that this lamp contains mercury. So very, very dangerous. You definitely do not want to either inhale the vapors, fumes of mercury, or even touch it. So, there you go. Anywho, our lamp description is on the third row. HPS means high pressure sodium. 400 is our wattage. Plant star means that this is a grow lamp. I do not know what the RP means, but if anybody knows, please let me know in the comments. And, of course, we have our wattage right here in the fourth row, 400 watts. And then, of course, we have our ballast type, which is the S51. This particular lamp can also be controlled and operated on the electronic version, meaning it's not electromagnetic or anything like that. It won't make any buzzing noise like you hear in a lot of street lights or anything like that. So yeah, it's a very quiet ballast, so that's why electronic ballasts are used more on grow lamps than on electromagnetic ballasts. Personally, I like the electromagnetic ballasts more because they produce noise. So, of course, we have our production of where it was made, which is China. And then, of course, we have some warning labels on the fifth and sixth row, both in English and in Spanish, containing mercury. It says contains mercury. And then, of course, that's the Spanish version. And then the letter R tells me that this lamp will still operate even if the outer envelope shell is broken the glass basically so there's that so now let's look at the construction of this grow lamp so of course we have our aluminum base with a polished ceramic insulator not to mention i've also seen a lot of po uh, ceramic insulators that have rough textures however this one is smooth this one is a polished smooth texture and then, of course, we have bulb glue to keep the base and the glass bulb together while this lamp is being transferred to many places. So, and then, of course, we have our stem right here. And that's to suck out all of the air and keep it vacuumed. Don't know the labeling on the base, but there's some labeling right there on the base. So there's that. And then, of course, we have our metal wires that go to the R2, which of course is obviously welded. It can't be soldered because solder melts at around, depending on what the solder material you use, if you use lead solder, it melts at around, it melts at around uh, 300 something degrees Fahrenheit. And if you use lead free solder, it melts at around 800 degrees Fahrenheit. So you cannot use solder in HID lamps because it'll just melt the s connections and then the lamp will not start. So there's that. So anywho, we have some interesting connections of how the arc tube is connected. So look at that. Pretty interesting if you ask me. And then of course the top is pretty interesting too. Look at that. And then of course extra support on the top to keep the metal from going all over the place. So, anywho, now I'm going to give you some specs about the lamp, 
and then we will flick it on. So this particular lamp here produces 50,000 lumens. Super damn bright. You do not want to stare at this bulb with any sort of eye protecting gear. So I usually wear a welding helmet for when I operate lamps under my own circumstance. What kind of protective gear do you guys wear when you maintain and look at HID lamps? Let me know in the comment section below and tell me what you guys do. So, this particular lamp also um, has a nanometer output at around 575 to 600 nanometers because of the sodium. It produces its usual orange color. This lamp can also be used for growing plants and it can also be used for commercial use too, like in street lamps, of course, because that's where these lamps are mainly used during the night. So this particular, of course, that uses 400 watts of energy. And then of course we have our ballast, which is the S51 and 24,000 hour lifetime, very long. So now, I think that is that. I think it's time for a lamp test. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in into my fixture. Now I know you people might think this is my, this is kind of bad for the lamp. Well, not really, but it will eventually burn out the ballast. I'm only going to be using this lamp just for this video. This is my 400 watt metal halide fixture that I constructed a few years back. And um, yeah, again, it only operates metal halide, but I found out a way to make it operate high pressure sodium bulbs. So right here is my plasma ball. And since this is a probe start metal halide circuit, it does not have an igniter. The metal halide bulb itself has a built in igniter, which is inside the bulb. So I am actually gonna be using this plasma ball to ignite the arc tube. And the plasma arcs inside of here is enough to ignite the gas in the arc tube. So pretty amazing invention if I say so myself. So again, this is my 400 watt metal halide fixture and I'm not going to be using this bulb on it permanently. It's just for this video. So once I'm done producing this video and all, I'll put back my 400 watt metal halide bulb inside of its original place. So let's set the camera right here on the ballast so you can get a great view of the lamp turning on. And once this lamp ignites, I'm gonna turn off the plasma ball immediately because I do not want the plasma ball to get hot and I do not want it to malfunction. This is the only plasma ball that I have and I do not want to ruin it. So anywho, without further ado, enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and turn on this brand new Sylvania grow lamp. Here we go.
All right, so I believe the lamp is at full brightness. And look at that beautiful orange color it's putting out. Beautiful. So this is what it looks like when it lights up this room right here. Pretty dang bright, actually. And I forgot to turn off the lights in the room here, but that's okay. It still lights it up pretty what nicely. So, anywho, I really hope you enjoyed this video of this very nice brand new Sylvania Lumilux Planter Star 400 watt high pressure sodium grow lamp. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments section below, and I'll try to answer back as soon as I can. So, with that said, please be sure to comment, like, rate, and of course, subscribe and hit the notification bell for new videos. So, thank you again for watching my video, and I'll see you guys next time.